Thanks. Thanks for having he me here. I'm going to talk to you about three things. I'm going to talk to you about congestion. I'm going to talk to you about pollution. And then I'm going to talk to you about the solution. Congestion is a worldwide scourge. Uh, no matter where you go, traffic is um, beyond control. It's simply uncontrollable, whether it's Bangalore or Boston or Buenos Aires, no matter where you go in the world today, you are likely to spend two to three hours in traffic trying to get, whether it's from your home to your office or to a meeting or anywhere else. This is a worldwide problem. It's getting much worse. I can share with you also um, a dirty secret that many people don't like to talk about, but this can be an electric car and this can be a shared car. And it doesn't matter, all cars are stuck in traffic. And so talking about moving to electric cars is really not going to solve the problem. Talking about moving to shared cars won't solve our problem. Of course, congestion leads to pollution. And if you look at the numbers, it's something like 80% of our greenhouse gases today are coming from automobiles, or urban cars. Um, and if you look at um, what portion of that is due to congestion, it's almost all of it. Because when cars move, they emit carbon gases, but it's not as bad as when they're standing in a city, idling, um, and that's really causing so much pollution. And you see it, of course, in the cities around the world with the greatest amount of vehicles and traffic. So Skytran is a NASA Space Act company. It means that we started in NASA, our technology uh, germinated at NASA, originated at NASA, and we're headquartered at the NASA Ames Research Center in California. And SkyTran is the solution to congestion and pollution, and I'm going to show you why. Of course, this is our planet, and this is what's becoming of our planet. And uh, I think many of you, if you've traveled to India or China, you've seen that this is already what our planet looks like. Um, it, you don't see the blue sky in, in parts of China. You never see a blue sky in parts of India. Same for Indone Indonesia, Malaysia. And it, this is becoming true for the Western world as well. There, there are days in Mexico City and Los Angeles where the, the clear statement is stay indoors, don't go outside. Just imagine a world where you have to tell your children and, and your friends don't go outside today. Building more roads uh, to, is the traditional solution that's offered, and sadly, we see it even to this day, where the solution is, okay, let's build more roads, let's put on more buses or more trains on the surface. But in fact, a uh, prominent study from the London School of Economics demonstrated beyond any question that the vehicle kilometers traveled is in direct proportion to what they call the available lanes of kilometers uh, resources, meaning um, the more roads you build, the more traffic you're going to get. And so if you build more roads, those roads immediately become congested, so much so that you actually get more congestion after the construction of the new road. And so one says, well, let's use public transportation, but people don't like to use public transportation. And if you look worldwide, in most big cities, the percentage of people using public transportation never goes over somewhere between seven to eight percent. And one has to ask why when the alternative is to be stuck in such bad surface traffic. Well, first, people don't like to follow schedules. If you have to catch a train at 8.05, you have to be at the station at least 10 minutes beforehand, whether to buy your ticket and um, Make sure that you don't miss the train in order to get to the station. You have to leave half an hour before because you don't know what traffic's going to be like to the train station. So having to match a fixed schedule is a great deterrent to people using public transportation. Nobody likes the crowding of public transportation. The worse traffic is, the worse the crowding at public transportation stations are. And you know, certainly, again, if you look at Asia, you, you know that um, it is almost impossible for a tourist to take public transportation because of the crowding. Um, buses and trains are going to be stuck in this mess. It doesn't matter that it's public transportation or not. Even with dedicated lanes, they wind up being stuck at some point during the journey in this traffic mess. 
It's slow. Public transportation stops at every station. And so you hop on the bus and then you're stopping and you, know, you may have 10 or 15 stations by the time you get to your destination. You have uh, invasion of privacy, people talking on their cell phones, are you trying to talk on your cell phone or trying to text and people looking over your shoulder. And here comes SkyTran. First and most important, it's elevated transportation, meaning we do not deal with the surface. We're over the traffic, so whatever happens down below, we don't care. This is a little Hollywood production we did for the Los Angeles City Council, so please excuse the fireworks. This is real traffic. Nothing here is photoshopped. This is Los Angeles traffic. We're not digging up the road, we're not closing the city for transportation, we literally come in and roll this out like Lego. The system follows your own schedule, you don't have to go and follow the train schedule, it'll come whenever you call it. On top of all of this, the system is the most environmentally friendly transportation system in existence. Our vehicles use less than one-third the energy of a hybrid car. So um, when you compare that to a bus or a train or diesel-based fuel or even electric cars that have a great deal of uh, heavy metals in their batteries, we're most environmentally friendly. And uh, the question is, of course, well, how does it work? How do you get such energy efficiencies? And I'm going to show you a little illustration of the technology, which we call passive magnetic levitation. What you're seeing here is my colleague is standing at the NASA Ames Research Center in California, and he's standing in front of a board, the black portion of which, the top portion, is plastic, and the bottom portion is aluminum. Now, plastic has no iron and therefore it doesn't interact with magnet. And aluminum has no iron either, and therefore it should not interact with a magnet, but aluminum does have something that physicists call loose electrons. And these loose electrons do act on a magnet in a kind of very heavy honey or heavy molasses type effect. Well, my colleague is going to show you here, he's holding in his hand a magnet, and a magnet, of course, is attracted to other magnets and to iron. And what he's showing you here is that he's dropping, dropping the magnet from the plastic to the aluminum, and it's going straight down because of gravity. So there's no surprise there. But look what happens when he changes the orientation of the magnet, and the magnet goes from the plastic to the aluminum. So as you can see, he's not doing anything other than to change the orientation to a T-shite type orientation. And now, when it hits the aluminum, it comes to almost a complete stop. We're going to show that to you again. From the plastic, it will go to the aluminum. It will go straight down the plastic, no iron. And then when it comes to the aluminum, because of these loose electrons that act like a molasses or a heavy honey um, consistency, the magnet comes to almost a complete stop. And what our engineers realized is that we could use this force, which is called an eddy force. We can use this force 
to fly. Basically, we can generate a magnetic wave and then we can fly on that magnetic wave, much like a glider glides on air, we can glide on this magnetic wave. So if you take this um, magnet concept and you add another magnet to it, you can create magnetic wings. And if you attach a vehicle to it, you can create a little magnetic airplane. And that's what he's going to illustrate here. He's going to take another magnet, drop it down, and you see that we really get very compelling flight doesn't go straight down, it goes off to the side and it would continue flying if the aluminum were longer. Now we take um, our vehicle and this is what we do in real life as well, we take our vehicle, we attach it to magnetic wings and then we give it a force, a, a forward force and that force can either be a push or a pull and now we're going to pull it and he's going to pull it straight ahead and you see what happens when he pulls the vehicles, the vehicle lifts off and starts to fly. And the importance of this is that this flight is free. We're not spending any extra energy to get the flight. All of this energy is coming from the forward propulsion. And we'll illustrate it again um, with a little pull. Uh, this vehicle is going to lift off and fly. The flight attained is energy free. It doesn't cost us any more energy. And the importance of um, gaining flight is that you remove friction. And when you remove friction from transportation, your energy requirements drop dramatically. So you can attain the type of efficiencies that a hybrid car gets, but only better. Then the question is, okay, well, how do you get the propulsion? So the way we get the propulsion is we, again, use the phenomenon of a magnet within aluminum. And this is our aluminum guideway, and these are what we call our reaction rails. And uh, these reaction rails are basically aluminum cylinders with an opening for our magnetic wings. And our motor sits inside this cylinder. But our motor, as you will see, um, is wrapped in a magnet. This is what the vehicle looks like. If you look up from below, you'll see two motors, and then you'll see it from straight on. You see the two motors and the wing. Now, these motors um, are simply the same kind of motor that would be in a fan in your room, it's just a rotating motor. That's what our hanging vehicle looks like, and um, the cool part is if we flip this over, Technology stays the same, the reaction rail rails uh, act the same, and we get a riding vehicle, and this serves uh, many functions, perhaps whether it's freight or people more comfortable being in a riding vehicle than a hanging vehicle, and so we can go either way, hanging or riding. This is um, Clark, and Clark is holding in his hand the, our motor, and what you'll see about the motor is that it has these, uh, this wrapping on it. And what this wrapping is, um, is a neodymium magnet. Neodymium is a very powerful magnet. And um, we wrap it around our motor. And what a magnet does, when you turn a magnet, it wants to go forward. It's like a screw. It wants to propel forward. So when we have our little motor sitting inside that cylinder that I showed you, and this magnet rotates, it goes forward, and that forward motion is all we need in order to get lift off of the vehicle. And with lift off of the vehicle, everything's now flying without friction. And here's an illustration of um, how this. Up the drive system. Will we get uh, regenerative braking? Ah, how intriguing. John smiling, okay. <laughs> so what you're seeing here, of course, is in this case, we have the cylinder moving and the motor fixed, but in the system itself, the motor's rotating and the cylinder's fixed, and so what you get is this forward motion of the vehicle, and that combination allows this vehicle to go very fast, up to 250 kilometers an hour. So we're trying to keep the planet blue. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, then. Thank you.